Hey guys, welcome back to After Credit Movie Chats. My name is Dean Thomas, and we are just about a month away from Batman v Superman finally hitting theaters, and that is ridiculous and awesome to say. I spent such a long wait, almost two years for a lot of us, I know, but we're almost there. But I would, I thought I'd sit down and give you something that I've had a conversation with quite a few friends of mine about how I think Batman v Superman will actually improve, quote-unquote, Man of Steel. I don't mean the, in terms of the overall quality, but I think the understanding of the film. Uh, when I initially saw Man of Steel in theaters, um, admittedly I'm not the biggest Superman fan, Batman's always been my guy, but initially when I saw the movie in theaters, I liked it. I thought it was okay, nothing special. But then when it came out on DVD and Blu-ray and all that, and I had a chance to, you know, sit down and watch it more often, and I've probably seen it upwards of a dozen times from start to finish and countless other times of just, you know, watching pieces here and there on TV or something. But I will, I like the movie even more every time I see it. You catch new things. You see what the director, Zack Snyder, was going for, how he was trying to expand this world, why he made the choices he did. And I think... Batman v Superman will highlight maybe why he made those choices even more and show that maybe some of the things in the movie being Man of Steel weren't just by accident or to be cool, but they actually served a purpose. So with that being said, let's get to some of the points of how I think of how I think Batman v Superman will improve Man of Steel. And one of those I think is expanding the world. And by that I mean showing just what the consequences of Man of Steel, what happened to that, will actually influence the how they influence the world. And showing that this isn't, to, this what Man of Steel wasn't an isolated event, wasn't an isolated movie, that it has a larger role to play. And I think the big argument people always have about this world and how it's being affected is, why in the world was there so much destruction during that final fight between Superman and Zod? And I think a lot of people thought Zack Snyder got carried away with the visuals and maybe that he just wanted this to be some giant over-the-top action scene. But really it's going to play a much bigger piece and we've definitely seen that as how they're using this, as I believe they're calling like Black Zero is what they're calling the destruction of Metropolis, but how they're using this to influence the rest of the world, how it's going to play a part in this new DC cinematic universe. And I think we can clearly see that in the trailer, just by placing Bruce Wayne there. This is the major part of the reason why he's going after Superman. He's seen the capability and destruction of this alien as he sees it. He doesn't know Superman. All he knows is this alien showed up and an entire city was destroyed and thousands of people died. And that they're using this in such a good way because while it could have been a mindless action scene with over-the-top destruction, there was a reason it all had to be destroyed because it was going to play a larger role in the universe going forward. And with that destruction also came people's reaction as to Superman. We didn't really get to see that. We see the destruction and then the movie kind of ends. We don't see how, you know, people are really going to react. Batman v Superman's one showing how is how Bruce Wayne or Batman reacts. But it's also showing us how the world is reacting to him. The divide it's created of the people that, you know, worship, worship him as this kind of savior, this messiah, this god. How he plays a huge role of hope to people. While a lot of politicians and other people are are scared of him. They're worried of what his power can do, as we can see that with the you know the false god spray painted on a statue. And I think this is going to really show that Superman will be held accountable for his actions. Will be held accountable for all that destruction that occurred in Metropolis. And it'll show that there were consequences, as opposed to where I think a lot of people had problems with Man of Steel, is because he wasn't held accountable. There was the destruction, and the movie ends. Well, this is a giant universe, and as we move forward, we're going to start to see those repercussions of the destruction of Metropolis. And then my next big point is, a lot of people had problems with Superman himself, of how he didn't really fit the mold of Superman as we had always grown up knowing. And I think Zack Snyder made a pretty good point of, he didn't change Superman. Yes, he may have changed the idea of Superman that we've seen in the movies thus far, but Superman as a character going all the way back to the 30s stayed pretty true to that. And also I think a lot of people need to remember that while he wasn't able to save everybody, like people always complain, well, Superman would try to save people. He saves a fair amount of people if you go back and watch that. But the other problem is he's learning how to control his powers. He had been Superman for a total of tw about 24 hours at that point, so he wasn't, you know, full-on Superman. 
He was just learning who he truly was. Also, he was trying to deal with an an extremely angry and genocidic Kryptonian race coming after him and the entire planet that he had to worry about. But my main point about how he didn't save anybody, but the fact is he saved the entire world. If he didn't stop Zod and those Kryptonians, they were going to destroy Earth and everything about it. So he saved, you know, upwards of 7 billion people. So I don't understand the argument of he didn't save anybody. But because Batman v Superman also takes place, roughly we're thinking about a year and a half after the end of Man of Steel, I think we're going to start to see Superman really come into his own, how he's no longer, you know, the rookie. He hasn't been Superman for 24 hours. He's been Superman for over a year now. He's probably figured some things out. He's on the way to becoming the Superman we really know, and we're going to start to see him move along that path. And I think a big part of his character development was actually the killing of Zod. I know a lot of people have problems with, you know, Superman doesn't kill, Superman doesn't kill. But what do you do with Zod? He's as powerful as Superman. You can't just lock him up. And as Zod had told Superman, you know, I'm going to destroy everything you love. I'm going to wipe out these humans. And either I die or you do. So clearly Superman didn't have much of a choice. And you see how it affected him emotionally, that just outburst of pain after killing Zod. And I think that's going to play a huge role in his character development because, of course, there's that big thing that Superman doesn't kill. He's got that rule of not killing. Well, where did that rule come from? Did he just wake up one morning and, oh, I don't feel like I should ever kill anybody? No, yes, he's a good guy. Maybe that came across. But he had to have that motivation, and I think that's what this, the killing of Zod's going to do. That's going to be that point in Superman's life where he goes, no, I can't kill. I won't kill anymore because it affected him so deeply. It hurt him to have to do that. So I think that's where his rule of no killing is going to come. Because as Batman has his rule of no killing, that comes obviously from the fact that his parents were killed right in front of him. And he feels killing is what separates him from the criminals. He won't do it where they will. And I think Superman needed some sort of event to take place in his life for why he wouldn't kill. And I think the killing of Zod is what's going to do that. He never wants to have to do that again. And there, guys, would be my main points. I mean, I could go on for a very long time about small little things here and there. But I think that's going to be the main points that we see focused on in Batman v Superman. That when you go back and watch Man of Steel, it will make a lot more sense. You'll understand the decisions that were made. Because as I said, every time I go back and watch Man of Steel, you see new things, you learn new things. You can kind of see where it's playing in the Batman v Superman as we see more and more footage from that. So... I would love to hear what you guys think. What did you think of Man of Steel initially? What do you think of it now? What's your overall impressions of the movie? Has anything you've seen from Batman v Superman changed what you think about Man of Steel? And just how excited are you for Batman v Superman? I mean, I can't wait much longer. We're about a month away, which is, once again, ridiculous and insanely awesome to say. But, yeah, jump into the comments below. Let me know what you guys think of Man of Steel. What you think... Think of it now that you've seen some footage of Batman v Superman, because I've got a feeling that's got to change the opinion of some people, like it did for myself especially. Uh, Let me know on Twitter as well, at AC Movie Chats. Make sure you're following me there for all the latest uh, movie news, trailers, and reviews, uh, which will give you all the links to my website, aftercreditmoviechats.wordpress.com. Thank you guys so much for listening. I'd love to hear you guys' opinions as always, and we'll see you back here next time.